There are known to be several factors contributing to the extent and direction of continental drift. A question remains as to which is the dominant causal factor. To determine this, we can imagine an Earth-like planet with one large continent and ask, is this situation a stable one? And if not, what will cause it to break up? Heat is generally assumed to be the energy source for the actual movement. It is the mechanics of transforming that heat into directed kinetic energy that is the unsettled issue. There are only two sources of heat on the Earth, one from the sun and the other produced internally. 100% of the sun's energy is, over time, re-radiated into space. If it collected at even the smallest percentage, the Earth would rapidly become uninhabitable. The internal source is from the initial energy of impacts that still remains, subsequent gravitational contraction, and ongoing radioactive decay. It is the internal source which drives the continent's motion because the sun's energy is a surface effect, rapidly re-radiated. Our surface is habitable, only because the greenhouse gases create an energy traffic jam so that it lingers a while before leaving. Internal energy reaches the surface too slowly to keep us warm by the same traffic jam effect. We assume here that the continents constitute a thermal blanket in comparison to the ocean floor. If you go down in a mine like Tautona in South Africa, the temperature increases till at over two miles deep. The rock surface is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Three miles has never been reached by humans and may be impossible. Heat collects beneath the continents whereas it is taken away more readily from the ocean floor by the deep ocean currents, which are maintained at near zero degrees centigrade. Water is an excellent heat conductor, and the deep ocean currents, though slow, carry away the Earth's internal energy more efficiently than do air currents over the continents. That heat is then re-radiated into space along with the solar energy. The hotter the rock, the less dense it is. The material under the continents is therefore lighter than that beneath the ocean floor. It constitutes a heat bubble. This bubble is forced upward underneath the continent by the greater density material being pulled downward towards the Earth's center. This causes the continent to dome up, and the bubble then follows the contour of the dome to rise higher still, thus forming an even bigger bubble. The continent will then slide down the incline formed by the bubble, but is torn in every direction. The greatest tensile force will then be at the center of the continent, pulling in all directions. It will then be torn apart along the track of least tensile strength, generally a line beginning in the middle of the continent and radiating outward. As that line extends, the point of greatest tensile force will transfer to the two ends of the line of least tensile resistance. The result is a fracture across the entire continent, more or less through the middle. The process of splitting in halves may occur over and over until the tensile strength of a remaining piece is greater than the tensile force causing them to twist as they slide down the bubble slope. Or, they may get to the end of the slope intact and simply float away over the ocean floor. As the pieces slide over the ocean floor, that floor is subducted under the continental piece because it is heavier. It offers resistance to the slide and serves to slow it. Where the fractures occur and the distance opens up between pieces, molten material comes to the surface to form new ocean floor. As this floor spreads, it does not subduct with the continent that is sliding away from it. The new floor merely keeps pace for it too is sliding down the bubble, which is now getting smaller, because the trapped heat is now escaping, making the underlying material cooler. When the continental piece finally collides with another piece, which it must do because the earth is round, the two pieces ram each other like two floaties. Both go up making mountains, 
or they crinkle making folds. It is extremely unlikely that one will go up and the other down because they are both lighter than the ocean floor over which they are running. Just as a floaty is lighter than the water travels on, and so won't dive down under the water. After the collision takes place, the spreading ocean floor which was chasing the continental piece will ram that piece and begin to push it by subducting. It goes under the now stopping continental piece because it is heavier. If the single continent reforms, it will simply repeat this process and break up again. No large piece of continent can be stable if the heat collects beneath it preferentially forming a heat bubble which produces tension in that continent greater than its tensile strength. This is then the primary cause of continental drift. Several other factors such as tidal forces from the sun and moon, rotational forces due to the earth's spin, equatorial migration again due to the earth's spin, and Coriolis forces redirecting the momentum of a piece, as well as doming by hot spots upwelling from the mantle, also influence the magnitude and direction of continental drift. But the former heat bubble mechanism is the main driver of plate tectonics. <laughs>